guys, I'm Peter from Build a Boeing. A lot of you guys have asked me if uh, I ever finished the throttle and was able to interface it. And the answer is uh, yes and no. I did finish it, yes, but uh, no, I never got around interfacing the servos. The switches, yes, they are working fine with a Pokies card. The, the servos, no, I never got them working. And I'd like to show you some of the things that uh, mistakes that I've made, so hopefully you will be able to avoid those if you decide to move into a motorized throttle. First of all, here's a Blue Loop card. I used uh, early on a uh, my second open cockpit servo card, and sometimes SOC just cannot handle two servo cards at, uh, in, in the same setup. So that was the case for me, and uh, the servo card just wasn't responding. Um, I replaced it with a Palulu card and now uh, all servos are responding uh, well. So that is okay now. Um, there are other reasons why I haven't uh, interfaced uh, the servos yet. But let me just show you some of the things that I've uh, done wrong or had to redo. Here is my uh, parking brake mechanism. You might remember this. It's a wheel here with two dents and a spring mechanism here that applies pressure so that when I move the handle you kind of feel when the handle is in the right position. That works very well. It's something I found from I think a German guy on YouTube so all credit goes to him. Down here is the servo and um, the idea is when I apply the toe brakes the servo will move the handle down like that and the uh, parking brake will come off. Um, that should work, I just haven't interfaced it yet. The servo, I started with one of those um, high-tech uh, 311 servos and that is simply not powerful enough here. You need high-torque servos with metal gears for all the different functions in here. So make sure when you buy the servos that you buy something powerful enough. On my last video, this mechanism was placed up here. But uh, I had to make room for the trim indicator, which you can see here. So that's my advice to you whenever you make something, if you can, make it go downward into the throttle bay because that this room up here is going to be crammed enough and you're probably going to need it for something else. For the trim I use one of these 9 gram servos that doesn't require a lot of power. Over here is another servo which is for the speed brake handle. The idea was or is that when I land, the servo will pull the handle down and auto-deploy the speed brake. I had it mounted with two screws that you might be able to see here, and that is simply not enough for a high-power uh, servo like this. It has a lot of uh, torque, and the first time I used it, it just uh, those two screws couldn't hold it in place, and this just tore itself off, came loose, and it's been hanging down here for two months now. I've made this piece of plexiglass that I'm going to install later tonight. Um, but if you are using servos, make sure that you mount them properly so that uh, the force they apply uh, it will still stay in, stay in place. Let's see if I can take this off here. On my captain, oh my captain, on this side. This servo here has caused me a lot of trouble. I'm just about to replace it for the second time, so that means that's the third servo going in today. Uh, for some strange reason, my cap my first off the side here, when I move the handle, you might be able to hear the servo. Okay, so when there is no power applied, I'm able to move the servo, uh, the handle back and forth. But when power is applied uh, with the outer throttle, the handle moves to a certain position and stay there. That's the way it should be, at least with servos. I know with engines you have a clutch so that you can move it anyway, but with servos that's the way it should be. Powered off, you can move it. Powered on, you cannot move it. Um, well, the thing is this servo, and this is the second one that has happened to me for two, t uh, the second time it happens to me, this one would go to 65% the first time I use it, and then it will stay there. And when I take the outer throttle off, it will stay in that position and I'm not able to move the handle. Uh, I've even tried to take uh, the wires from the Blue Loop car, take, them, take it apart, uh, so that it will be totally unpowered, and still I'm not able to move the servo. It's just stuck at that position. 
So I need to replace it with a new servo and hopefully that will be able to move. Um, I don't know why this is and it's very annoying, but uh, that's just apparently the way it is. Uh, when you get a servo, you get it with a plastic arm like this. And uh, it has more teeth inside, you might be able to see, maybe not. And that took the servos, because they are high torque, it took them about two days to grind these teeth off. And uh, then the servos will move, but the handles wouldn't move at all. Uh, so you, if you use high powered servos, you need to buy metal arms like this uh, to get the power from the servo transferred further down the system to your handles. The last thing I'd like to show you, I just need to grab a, here an additional servo. Uh, now these are of course not the high uh, torque, high powered ones I'm using, but the, I'm just using them as an example here. My design here is mirrored. If you have the drawings, this is plate number eight. Then you have plate number seven, that's the middle one coming down here. And then number six for the first officer side. And it's mirrored so that I have the, the plate, then the potentiometers, then the handles, and then the servos on each side. That was my uh, original design. That doesn't work, because um, that means the servos will be placed like this, right? Uh, on each handle. And the thing, the problem with this is that they're opposite each other, so that when this servo goes to the minimum position, it will go down that way. And when that one goes to the minimum position, it will go down that way. So you can see, full throttle, idle. That's a problem. Uh, when you turn the uh, outer throttle on, your handles will move opposite. So what you need to do is, and I had to, I had to redesign it down here and move this servo the other way around. Uh, early on, it was placed here in this hole. Uh, no longer, now it's placed the other way around, so that they're actually placed like this. First of the side, or handle number two, handle number one, okay? And make sure when you mount the servos, that the minimum position of the servo is the idle on the handles here. Otherwise you'll get into trouble as well. So that's my, the most important thing here. Servos, the same way, minimum equals idle. Yes, and did I mention uh, a lot of things coming loose? I think, I, I, I don't know if you saw that, this one saying hello here. That's the potentiometer for the first officer's side, uh, handle number two. That just came loose like half an hour ago, uh, like this one. And that's of course supposed to be in place. I've used hot glue for um, a lot of things in here and that might not be the best of solutions. Hot glue, it's good for um, panels because inside a panel, nothing is moving. But inside a throttle here, there's a lot of things moving, there's a lot of uh, power being applied, and things will just come loose. These switches for the fuel cutoff switches have come loose a few times, and uh, also other switches has, has come loose and I need to uh, remount them. So um, make sure that you mount things properly the first time. I think that's about it. My advice is if you are going to make a motorized throttle, uh, make sure the servos are fitted the right way. Make sure that you uh, mount everything uh, probably from the very beginning. And um, apart from that, have fun. I'm Peter from Bilderberg. You guys take care. Bye-bye.